switch off the phone, sir. We'll have a moment of silence and invoke the Divine's presence. Om Namo Bhagavate Om Namo Bhagavate Thank you very much the invocation team to invite me here so that I can share my experience prior to being in Auroville and after being in Auroville. Uh, without uh, going in too much detail into my life, uh, and trying to concentrate more on how Sri and Mother touched me. Uh, I will start from a small childhood that a boy of a uh, five-year-old, a child who had this wild imagination, out of the world imagination, who decided to go into different worlds to talk to different things that we don't see in this normal world. But at the same time, had a very high level of concentration on things that are actually real. So these two paradigms of concentrating on the real and imagining a world out there, that child was not able to synthesize these two realities. He would see fairies, he would think of uh, gods, he would think of animals flying, he would think of birds walking, all kinds of things. The things of uh, fables that we hear, you know, once long ago. Probably because his parents used to tell him a lot of stories. But then he, had, he would concentrate on people as well, on how they groom themselves, on how they talk to each other, on how they behave, how, how they keep things, use things, he would do that as well. So these two worlds, uh, 
he lived in both of them but there was no connect between both this practical and what others would say an impractical world and as he grew there was a the divide was even bigger probably his parents this boy called gajanand who was uh, named by his father later when he was giving his birth certificate they decided to name him drupad this child later he we could say that he got influenced by his uh, multilingual background of his parents and the people that he lived in a state of goa his father and mother spoke in konkani to each other but they decided to speak to him in english and to his sister as well but to the relatives they would speak in kannada they would speak in marathi and they would speak in hindi so imagine his second grade teacher uh, to her bewilderment when he comes to her and says teacher this this place is not enough to fill my mother tongue so she said which language do you speak at home so he really imagined that his mother tongue was english konkani hindi marathi kannada all of those this was very fantastic because he would relate to all these people but uh, at the same time uh, the people would not relate to him so this brought positive things but at the same time brought negative things in his life so he could not relate because he would think in all their thoughts but at the same time he didn't have the experiences they did they would talk about one culture and he, he would talk about multi cultures so there would be misunderstandings all would laugh but he would be confused but one thing that always saved him was his father and mother's laughter i was that child and so was my sister because she also went through the same journey i remember while i was growing up i would relate to my a few friends in the school who were multicultural because they were studying in various schools like kendriya vidyalaya and all that and they would come for short time and i would relate to them but they were not there for too long they would go back so i would relate to all i would relate to all but all would not relate to me so in this divide i would always try to search a humanity in books to name a few chandamama and amar chitrakatha and i would plunge myself in these books that my father would bring as a growing child and i would try to find out this so called multicultural uh, life the word multicultural i learned now but for that child imagine uh, he wanted to see all kinds of things packed into one like our bharatnatyam dance performance where we have the music we have the dance we have the the theater we have all the things in one he wanted to see that in one so he could find that in the books and then he scanned and scanned more and more books thanks to his father but then at the same time when he was scanning those books he would find once again that divide in the books and him because those were characters that he could not see in real life perhaps they were mythological perhaps they were fictional perhaps they were something else but he did continue seeing them in his imaginary world sometimes creating them sometimes making them part of his stories so then he started growing up with the children around his place and <clears throat> he would play with, with people he would play a game called house house and he wanted to see this this imaginary world in the real world it took a lot of time and he got a lot of setbacks as a child but these setbacks could not be seen outside it was just within himself his friends did feel these setbacks or he did not show it 
thanks once again to his laughter. When I hark back, I remember a discussion I had with one of my friends. talking about Andromeda galaxy. So it sounded very fascinating, a galaxy that would finally meet our galaxy, the Milky Way. From far away, they would meet each other. Imagine this, two galaxies meeting each other. That sounded fascinating. And it reminded him, oh, there is a reality that is really vast, that is humongous. And uh, he saw, yes, I want to see that reality because I can't see here. So he went on searching. So in order to search that, he started writing at the age of 13. I think it was modern Mahabharata. Those days they used to show Ramayana and Mahabharata, so he decided to write modern Mahabharata, thanks once again to his father's humor but to see the other world. That was his inner intention. Things went, things went forward. His parents also were known by the folks all around Goa, by the intelligentsia of Goa. His father was a director of a department. His mother was a homemaker. But at the same time, they were theater people as well, passionate theater people. So there would be a lot of people coming to his house. Why I say he is because, uh, it is because of Aurovin. Because this, this place snapped me from that he. It brought me to the place where, where I can resonate with that imaginary world, that impractical world and the practical world joining together. That is why I have to make this separation between he and the current me. So things went on in his house, and the only thing where he would relate to is his imaginary world, and the second is his love to talk to beings that we, we will not see in day-to-day -day life. One of those beings is Ganapati. He would talk to him once in a year. Ganapati would come home on his birthday, he would talk. My mother told me that I was the one who asked my father to call Ganapati home. They used to not celebrate Ganapati. They would do Lakshmi Puja. So I said, no, I want Ganapati Puja at home. So that is the time this child would talk to this, this Godhead. And he would talk, he would play, he would have fun with this Godhead. And he would ask about different gods. Probably he would imagine the answers that Ganapati would give. It could be Ganapati who gave those answers. We, right now, I don't know. So this discourse went on between Ganapati and he. And at the same time, reflecting with his books, with his friends, with his schoolmates, with, his, with everything around him, trying to make sense of these two separate worlds, what humans would call the practical and the impractical that of fantasy and that of real life. The turning point came after he completed his 10th grade examinations. And he went through almost seven, eight years of turmoil because the education that he was getting through all these external sources, he wasn't happy. So he tried multitudes of things. He tried engineering, he tried fine arts, he got admissions everywhere, but he left within three months, four months. Various courses, catering, he tried everything, but he was not interested in the way they were teaching him. He was attracted to his father's way of teaching, which is learning how to learn so that I can learn myself. I, I remember we used to have these things called summer vacations where it was almost a two months of window where, uh, where I would be home. And my father would make, 
he had interest in almost everything, in history, geography, in physics. He was a physics graduate. He did law. So he had interest in almost every field. So he would make big charts. And when he made those big charts of history, what happens in India, and at the same time, what's happening in France, and what's happening in the, in the Western world, what's happening in the Eastern world. And I would see those charts. It was very interesting charts. And I would ask him, could you make these charts for geography? He would say, I have done this no, for history. Why don't you do for geography? But I could not do the way he would do. So it would, uh, it would sort of irritate me. And I would try to relate different subjects together and try to see how to make that. I was already a skilled artist at that time. Uh, and uh, I was fascinated by almost every subject which I couldn't see in my friends. I was not good at them, but I was fascinated by them. There were people who were, who were not fascinated and who would get higher marks than me. It didn't matter to me. As long as I have fascination, they were gods for me. Mathematics, algebra, physics, geometry, home science, these were all gods. Some gods I didn't know. Some gods I knew a little better. Some gods I knew very well. So they were gods. So, but I could not do the way my father did. So I had to put my mind during that summer vacation. But after that summer vacation, it went to just mugging up things. And I would be disinterested. And out of this disinterestedness, what happened was, because when you are in a school environment, you are supposed to you're supposed to be participate in that environment. And I was not able to do that. And because I was not able to participate in that environment, I started lying. I started saying, I'm doing this thing, when I was not. Sometimes I was interested in geography for three, four days on an end. Other days, I was not. So I didn't understand why I had to do geography, geography homework on the day I'm not interested to do it. So I started lying at home and lying in the school. So this brought additional problems to that uh, whole divide which I mentioned earlier. Things went on, my theater world went on, my lies went on, my experiments with, uh, with my fantasy, uh, not fantasy, but my, my, my mythical readings went on. And I tried to make some sense of it all. That the divine existed was, no, for me, not a doubt. But whether this world existed was a huge doubt for me. I did not believe that this existed. I thought it was a figment of my imagination. Because my imagination had run so wild, I could think anything on any day. I could think like anybody on any given day. I could think like my friend. I could defend my friend even if I didn't believe in him, even if I didn't agree to anything he said. I could behave like anyone else. So I thought if I'm able to do so many things, if I'm able to be so many people, it is not possible because they are not doing that. This must be my dream. So whatever happens in this dream is either unreal or is my fault. There was only one way, and I knew books were my only way and solace. So I said, let me try to find some other types of books that may give answers. Now, it may all se seem quite grim, but it was not. It was, there were quite hilarious situations in all this grim. So I started reading self-help books at the age of 16, 17. So Dale Carnegie and many of the names I don't even remember. Uh, self-help books, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, and all these people I started reading at that time. And, um, and I, I did not know again how to read because they, I did not know how to relate to them because they were talking about uh, marketing, they were talking about how to win friends, and uh, I didn't want to win friends. Uh, so, but anyway, I said, books have given me answers, let me go and find some answers in these books. 
I went through everything, self-help books, guides, life coaches of that time. I went through all of them and I imbibed a lot being an actor at that young age and being already started directing, choreographing dance, uh, I started imbibing. Th there are many parallel stories, but th they are not so important because this imaginary and non-imaginary world, I feel, are more important than all the skills that I have acquired before that. <clears throat> they play no role. They are just skills. Some of them stayed, some of them stopped. So I developed new skills. But this, these books, I could advocate these books to all my friends. And my friends would come and they would ask things and I would ask them and we would, re we would try to make sense of those books and I would implement those books. But at the same time, they would not lead me to that Andromeda galaxy, that huge galaxy coming and meeting the Milky Way. It's unfathomable even now. It's like quantum physics and astrophysics talking to each other on, in the same, on the same table. And that is part of our real world. That is not part of, our, of the world that, we, that people um, may, may say, oh, no, I do not believe it. It's not part of that world. The, num the number of stars, the number of... It is just mind-boggling when we just talk about this simple fact. I wanted that fact. And which means if this fact can happen, this collision can happen, then there must be another collision. So, all the books got over. And at that time, I was exploring all the skills I had developed by studying various things, by starting working in supermarkets, because I started fending for myself. So I started going uh, to work at places and start exploring how, how can I do things by doing. Because till now I was reading, I was seeing, but I was not doing anything. So I decided I should start doing things. Maybe by doing things, I may start learning something. So, at first, this was somewhere around 93, 94, I met a few, I can call them acquaintances, but people who, who were evangelicals, who wanted to share the word of God with me. So I went with them. I remember my father, I told him I have to go to these evangelical meetings, you know. I said, oh, that's nice. He had all the all religious books and everything in, it, in the house, so he would read all kinds of interpretations and all that. He said, very good. So I, to, um, he dropped me every day for those classes. And within seven days, I decided I will become a Christian. So the first thing we have to do as Christians is to repent our sins. Our, our wrongdoings, the things that we have done wrong to others. I said, this is fabulous. So I wrote all the wrong things I have done. I, I couldn't write everything. <laughs> so the most of it I wrote. And I went to my father. <clears throat> and, and I gave him that. And I said, I want to tell something. I have accepted Christ in my life. And since I have accepted Christ in my life, I have decided to tell you my past. And I gave this document to him. <clears throat> he looked at that and he asked me, uh, what is this? So I said, I have been lying to you. I have been cheating you. And I actually started narrating each and every, I could remember every single lie. Uh, to me right now, that is surprising. That every single lie I could remember, every single bad thing I could remember, that was shocking. That is shocking right now. I can't remember all the good things I have done. I, every single bad thing. And I told my father. And he told me, go upstairs and sit in that room. 
So you can imagine me at that time when my father already in his mind, he's putting me in curfew now. So I went up, I went, there was a, uh, <clears throat> there, was, there was a Bible, I sat with it, I just put my hand on it and I concentrated, I know what I was getting into. So my father told that let him sit in that room, I will talk to him later. Later in the evening, I, he called me down and he was furious. But my father doesn't show fury in, in, the, in, in, in violence. That he would do, but not in these cases. Then he was very furious that, he was not furious that I was becoming Christian actually. He was furious that I had to listen to someone else and tell the truth to him. And that why couldn't I tell the truth myself? But I understood this about eight to nine years later. But at that time I thought he does not want me to be Christian. Yes, he did mention if you are Christian, you are no more my son. And I did answer to him that I was never your son. I have always been God's child. Not yours, not my mother's. <clears throat> so the, the evangelical in me decided to be strong and decided to follow it. So in the curfew, I would rigorously read the Bible day in and day out. And I would see downstairs, he would be playing bhajans more than ever. Bhajans and, and the Vedic chants. It was like uh, 10 times than he used to do. He, he would do pujas, he would do all kinds of things. He would do it himself. And I would wonder, why is he doing this? So one day he called the church group and told them that this is what's happening and uh, please don't call him to your church group. He will devastate your church. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a nuisance. Please, you, whatever Christ you all have, he will take it out of you all. <laughs> uh, so I didn't understand what, what, from where it was coming. He said, please, you don't know him. Uh, he's a to total, he will spoil Christ's name. That's what my father told them. No, they said, no, no, he's not, he's a good boy. And all this general conversation happened. No, 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 you all are very nice people. Don't, 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 this is a messy, messy boy. He, he tells lies, do you know that? <laughs> so... Poor people, they went back, they said, don't worry, you can do it. Uh, you, your father understands you, he loves you. Uh, they realized that I, I must have even had a tiff with my father. They said, don't shout at him, he's loving. And so they went. Uh, but in me was this, was this, still this anger <clears throat> that... Uh, this again separation, now it became Christ and the other world. Although for me at that time it was only Christ, but insidely these two worlds, I always wanted to collide. So I could not negate anything, nothing I could say no to. Everything that came to me, I could not say no, whatever it be. No matter it looks bad at that time and I wanted to join. So in anger at my father, I say, okay, I'm going to read his literature to prove him wrong. Of course, this was not a one day thing. So I started reading his literature. What was his literature? He would read many things. He would read Dhammapada. He would read Zandavesta of, uh, of Zoroastrian things. He would read all kinds of, so I started reading that stuff. Let me read interpretations and this and that. So what happened from 94 to 98 was every six months, I started following a new religion. So one day, the heaven is true. The second day, the hell is true. The third day, heaven and hell don't exist. The fourth day, I am heaven and hell. So literally changing of opinions every six months. So I told my father I want, I want membership in Central Library. I don't understand what's happening. So I joined the Central Library, 
to find out my guru. This was in 1997. I was working as a night auditor. So I had whole day free, night auditor in a, in a, in a five-star resort. So in the morning, I used to go to, uh, <clears throat> I used to go to the library and I would sit. And every day I would take, I would chant our uh, Kuladevi, our hometown god, uh, her name. Her name is Parmeshwari. So I would say, Om Namo Parmeshwari, Om Namo, the whole day I would chant. I want Guru. You give me the way. And at the same time, I would go to the central library, death, death, and Christian virgin, uh, the evangelical virgin, the uh, born again Christian, the orthodox Christian, all this, just scanning and scanning. <clears throat> so, again, that, <laughs> that brought a lot of confusion once again. Uh, but I didn't stop because once I set off, there is no stopping. But now the practical world and the impractical world had to meet. There is no looking back. Swami Shivananda, all the books, every book of Swami Shivananda, all the books of uh, Ramakrishna Paramahas, all the books of Swami Vivekananda, all, uh, all versions of everything. I would get lots of answers, but nothing to join these two worlds. I would get answers of what is Europe, what is this thing, what it represents, all these answers, but not something that joins everything. So I would create all kinds of equations, all kinds of equations, like how we have the astrophysics equation and the quantum physics. I would create all kinds of equations, but uh, unified string theory, I would create all kinds of theories within me, but they would still not meet. So, central library. Those days, people used to steal the central library books <laughs> and not return for months sometimes on it. So they made special fine on certain sections. And the spiritual section was notorious for stealing. That's a nice thing actually, you know, that people read spiritual books. And uh, then there are other sections that were notorious for people stealing and not returning back. Uh, so they would, almost two times of the price if you give after certain months, they would, uh, uh, they would levy on you. So I went and one day, after reading all the volumes of Shivanand <clears throat> and not eating vegetarian for almost five years in a fish eating house, I took out one book, blue book. It had uh, a freedom fighter's face on it. The freedom fighter, this particular freedom fighter had asked for total independence. The first person actually. And uh, the Britishers, they had called, gave him a tagline, the most dangerous man alive. In fact, what is interesting about this uh, blue covered hero is that we got independence on the very, on his birthday. So I read, Sri Aurobindo or the Adventure of Consciousness. I said, what a, what a silly title. What has this book got to do with this? This has to be in the, in the history section. What is it doing here? So I thought, consciousness. Maybe some author is very creative. You know, sometimes authors do a lot of creative works. And he might have. So I go inside some mind cells and something. It's, I said, okay, let me just take it. Something intrigued me inside and I took it home. I didn't return it for six months. I read, reread, it became my it, it became my Bible. And I frantically searched the entire central library to see that if somewhere, and they had these sections where you could find um, which books and this thing. And Shurabindo was nothing. There was no Shurabindo. So that's not possible. If such a freedom fighter has to be there. So I went entire history section, entire this section, nothing. And in one section I found Nolini Kant Gupta Sri Aurobindo. Oh, Sri Aurobindo here. But it was in Nolini Kant. I went, took that book, read all Nolini Kant Gupta's books. So then my father saw and he looked and said, 
he looked at the adventure of consciousness. He said, oh, you're reading Sri Aurobindo? Uh, it is about the central library, yeah? the center. I looked at him and I told him, why you didn't tell me? He said, why you didn't ask me? <laughs> so, so I went on top to Sri Aurobindo center. It was the last center where actually mother signed. After that, she didn't sign any center. And uh, my father was the one of the founding members. So I was so annoyed and so happy and all at the same time. And I'm going there and there was a book exhibition. So I tell my father, there's a book exhibition. And my father purchases for me synthesis of yoga. Which for first page, English is my mother tongue. So the first page took me whole day. <laughs> so, so, so I'm filled with joy right now. So I had to go to, to Shrivindo Ashram. So I told my father, I have to go. But I had no money, so I would earn about, I think it was 2,500 rupees per month. It was not enough to go. So I started saving, saving uh, as many connections I can make with Shrivindo. I got to know the person who started the center was S.S. Kulkarni, uh, 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 he was a, he has done doctorate in Sri Aurobindo's plays. So even my father suggested his name. So I, I started studying under him. Uh, and uh, so I started making a plan to go. Next year, I collected some money. My father decided to give me some money also. So I calculated, I thought 3,000 is enough. Uh, my father decided to give me more, but I said, no, I will go with 3,000 and come. And uh, so he booked all the tickets. I made the necessary letters. He was the one who, who actually wrote the letters. He said, I want to write the letters. So he wrote like an advocate, actually, to one uh, Sri Ramakant Bhai from, from the ashram, who is from Goa. And uh, so I remember the time when I came to to the ashram, I asked, I requested to meet uh, uh, Amal Kiran and and uh, <clears throat> and Nirod Baran. Both of them I wanted to meet. So I asked uh, Ramakan Bhai that can I meet them. He said yes. I have fixed an appointment with both of them. And then he called me and said, uh, "What is this letter you have written?" It's uh, so I said, no, sir, it's my father actually wrote. And we were speaking in Konkani, which is, which is my another mother tongue. So, so I said, ah, OK, OK. And he got, he understood. So then we went and met them both. And before leaving, uh, he said, Bef you have to go to Matraman there before you all leave. So the April. Me and my father, it was April 3rd, one day before the final arrival of Sri Aurobindo, I went to, I went, entered Matramandir. I remember that time I had, they had this punching, uh, punching system, they had this card where you have to go and you have to fill this card. And then you go, you go inside, there's a whole line and then you take that card and give back and then they give you a kind of card where you can punch for five, six times. So I did the whole process and went back. I got this multi-card uh, paper and I went to that guy and he looked at me and he said, you will have to come on this date. And he said, uh, four days later. I looked at him not understanding what it meant. Four days later, uh, so do I have to wait for four days or uh, do I have to stay here? I didn't understand. Then I just told him without knowing what, what it meant. No, uh, 
I was supposed to go today. I didn't say, I want to go today. I said, uh, no, we are supposed to go today. And he looked at me, and he, he looked at the guy, ah, oh, okay, then you can go. <laughs> and we entered <laughs> bathroom and there. So, and then my father came out, and we talked to someone, and they, they told my father, that uh, here you can build a house and it does not belong to you. My father told me, hey, isn't that fascinating? Actually, nothing belongs to us. We should have a house here which does not belong to us. We, we should pay for it and we should stay in that. I said, huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. N not knowing because for me, Mother and Sri Aurobindo came on earth. So the entire, uh, on the universe. So the entire universe has become pure. So for me, Ashram, Auroville, Goa, it doesn't matter, it didn't matter to me. It mattered to me that they were close to Andromeda galaxy and in the Milky Way, they were close to these two beautiful galaxies. They were there in the universe. They did not come for just two physical locations, they came for the universe. This was what fascinated. So it didn't, ah, staying in Auroville, ah, okay, okay, Auroville, yes, okay. I told my father, I went back, and after a few years, I got, uh, I got a job as a theater teacher in a school. And my father told my, my, my sister, now what I have to do, I have nothing. And passed away. Yesterday was his 20th anniversary, my first guru. <clears throat> my mother also passed away in August. My another guru, Amba Shankar, also passed away in August, few days after my, my mother passed away. My eternal guru, Sri Aurobindo, is born in that month. So I said, you are leaving me to him? And I folded my hands to them and I folded when my father said, you are leaving me to my guru right now. What a great sacrifice they, they have done leaving me alone with my guru. So I decided as a teacher, I decided my time right now, it's a time for practical life. So SS Kulkarni tells me that uh, if you have any plans, please let me know. I'm going to Auroville and Ashram and I, I will try to see the, if that plans are successful. And I told him, I have a plan of starting Le Laboratoire d'Evolution. Uh, he said, uh, what is the purpose of this? And I told him, I want this land and it has to be like this, something like Auroville, something like this in Goa. He said, okay, there is a, there is a project like this called Usha Karl Sri Aurobindo University and there's a trust in Goa which does this work. I jumped on them and because they were close to where I used to teach. So I went there and I told them, uh, I am so and so, I teach in this school, it's Manovika school and I, I would like to be of help. I don't know how to do things. You tell me, I will do, I have all the resources, I have bike, I am a performer, so on and so forth. And uh, they started spreading the news, this boy from Auroville. Uh, and I, every time I had to go, I'm not from Auroville, I'm from Panjim. And they would call me the boy from Auroville. <laughs> so, so, so every time I would come here and I would try to study administratively how this place works so that it could be implemented there. Seven years, many years passed, I don't know how many actually, it looks like many, and my mother asked me, uh, uh, what are you doing here? You go there, no? I said, yeah, that makes sense. It didn't work because most of them became old. Some got Parkinson's disease. Some left from there and went and settled with their daughters or daughter-in-laws. And just uh, things went and that trust, Usha Kal trust just dissolved. They were, they were all devotees of the mother and Shobindo. They were DYSPs, they were SPs, they were professors of college, principals of college, all such important people. And uh, so I said, yeah, maybe I did something wrong by doing, the, if I had not gone there, they probably would have done. 
So I came here in, uh, in Auroville. Finally, I had got the funds to do that. I came in 2007 and started working in Matra Mandir and Deepanam School and said, yeah, I will check out how this place works and see if I go there. And everyone who would ask, I would tell the same. You know, I've come to check out this place, how it works. I know the ideology, I know everything, how it works. You know, the, the inner stuff, I know how it works. Uh, that I can read in synthesis of yoga, I've read. Huh? So all this kind of stuff I would tell. But I don't know administration, that is what I want to learn. And I will go and implement this Usha Kalt project and this thing, all these grand plans. And that time Jill comes and tells me, uh, we require a mime artist and all this person who does movement to act as Hamlet in a play. And in that process of a, 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 a mime artist doing a, a role, I, I remember the time I used to write plays and I would not remember my own scripts. And now I had to play Hamlet. And during that process, it was a process which brought me inside Auroville. So nothing mattered anymore. Not the economy, not the, um, the, the style of operation. The, nothing mattered anymore but Auroville. But it took time. I remember the time, almost six months, I was in haze when I used to enter Matra Mandir. I don't have memory of those six months. I only have an emotional memory. What I saw, I don't know. What I did, I don't know. Which, where I went, I don't know. I have no memory of six months in Matra Mandir. No memory of what happened, except when I started doing Hamlet. So I re realized later when I was doing Hamlet, that I had to buy heart everything. And I told Jill, I am bad in memory. I'm pathetic. My own scripts I do not remember. What will I remember? Hamlet. So everybody started saying, we know all our thing. I said, Jill asked me to do some movement. And I know Marcel Marceau's wife had done the entire play in Hamlet in mine. So I knew it was possible. So I thought I would do some kind of movement. We would put recording of the voice and I would do. But no, I had to buy heart. So I went to Dorothy, who was my guide in, in Matra Mandir. And, uh, I told, and she could see this in me. And she said, what happened? I said, I have this problem. She said, don't worry. You sit in socks level and do whatever you have to do. You do it here, no? Why you have to leave Matra Mandir? Do it here. So I took Hamlet and did Pradakshina on socks level, where everybody wears socks. That is during the cleaning time. I remember learning from my father how to learn. But that time, I, I learned that actually if we do not put in action those realms, they will not be true. They will not come down on earth. So that action I learned here in Auroville. How to merge that two words. Always, always I was trying for the external to see those, to merge those two worlds in the external. But they were always merged. There is no difference between the impractical and the practical. They are merged together. They have always been. And that I understood while reading, while doing that Pradakshina, while doing that roundings and with Hamlet in my hand. My love for Orville, I realized a few years later, when I went to give a workshop in, in Sinferopol, I had a problem with my, with my visa. It was, uh, it was uh, one day prior to the flight, it was uh, expiring. So they detained me. And they thought that uh, I wanted to become a European citizen or something like that. So they asked me, the, there was an interrogating officer who came, a lady with impeccable English, and she started telling me, and she said, uh, so why you're here, and all that. I said, I'm for a workshop. I'm come to help. My sister is here. I had many sisters everywhere. And, uh, and when I, uh, <clears throat> and when she, uh, when she called, uh, when she called the main chief officer, and he did not know, he, he was speaking in Ukrainian. Uh, and she asked many questions on his behalf. And he asked me one question. Do you want to be a European citizen? 
I said, no way. I don't want to be any citizen of any country. I live in Auroville. I have Ukrainians here. I have Russians here. I have Japanese people here. I have ballet teacher here. I have theater teacher here. I have people who I worked with, uh, with, um, um, with Marcel Marceau. I have, I have people who have interviewed Marcel Marceau seven times. One of the people who have founded Auroville Radio. Daniel. <clears throat> I have people who have worked with stalwarts. Why will I go there? And that time I realized, oh my God, I love this place. I didn't know that. That was the, the practical example of me, how much I loved this place. So for the next half an hour, when my sister is sitting up, that guy, that uh, officer, was asking me about Auroville. So how do we visit there? What is it? Who is Mother and Shubindo? <laughs> what do you all do there? How does it work? How does the thing, then I had to tell him there's embassies and embassies have connection. Yeah, yeah, I remember some of the people had come here. And uh, so I realized that day why she made this place. She made this place not, not because that we Aurovillians are united here. She made this because she made this as an experimental laboratory an experimental laboratory where sometimes hydrochloric acid and nitric acid mix together and create an explosion, which I always knew that in an experimental place there are bound to be mistakes. Before coming here, I would think, hey, what are they doing? What is this? What is this thing? I would look at the ashram, why are they so austere, so without humor? But I realized, I realized one thing, these are places of experimentation. These are places and they are, they have done two places of experimentation. I do not know how many more million places Shubhendu and the mother have, have put these bases. Physically and practically we know too. And I have seen them experiment with us here in Auroville. I would like to invite now an experiment or as what we call in, in mime exercise. I would make an exercise of calling a very close friend of mine. His name is Sanjay Biswas. He is an experiment, just like me. Sanjay Biswas, I met him here in Pondicherry. I would like him to come and sit along with me. I met him here in Pondicherry. Now, this experiment is born on 15th August that I got to know in Pondicherry. He had, an, he had a, an experience or an exercise where he, in, in UP, he is from West Bengal, again from Calcutta, from my master's home. In UP, he was there and during the lockdown, he suffered great loss. And he went into terrible depression. This man who is also born on 15th August. <clears throat> and he went in terrible depression. And he was almost three and a half months alone himself in one room in Uttar Pradesh. Look at this experiment. And he had to go through it. We were all guinea pigs of this experiment. And in this three and a half months, he decided that he will take his life. And so he attempted what we call as suicide. So when he attempted, he attempted, I think, twice. And fantastically, he failed. Two failure attempts. So he's a failure, actually. He failed to suicide. So when after failing to suicide, he got an inspiration, a fantastic inspiration. Sir, can you tell me that inspiration in Hindi? In Hindi, can you tell me? I will try to translate it. Okay? okay. Tell that inspiration in Hindi. Namaskar. Zindagi anmol hota hai. Aur e zindagi ko jab ham log dard ke maare khatam karna chahte hai, 
वहाँ पे हमारा दर्द ख़त्म नहीं होता है वहाँ से हमारा दर्द का मार्केटिंग होता है इट्स अ फैंटेस्टिक पंच लाइन आई डोंट नो वट इज दिस पंच लाइन बट ये मेरे जिंदगी के साथ हुआ है तो मैं वही बोल रहा हूँ बट इट हैज चेंज लॉट ऑफ पीपल एम आई राइट और नॉट ट्राई किए मैंने ये बट ही हैज चेंज एंड आई हैव सीन हिम चेंज हियर इन ऑरोविल विथ अ पर्सन हु लिव्स इन ऑरोविल वॉट ही सेज इज when we go through immense depression and and sorrow we decide to take a step of taking our life to solve that depression so what is our intent to solve that depression but we are not solving that depression we are marketing that depression to the people around us when he came to orovil i invited him because he travels all over india by cycle to do this someone had suggested to him please go by cycle your depression will get less and it did and he decided to go all over india next month he goes all over bangladesh 64 districts right 64 so he will go in next month he will travel all over bangladesh to help people come out of depression on the way he just goes find somebody and tries to help them here he came and i know my, a friend of his like my sister so she never reveals herself to anybody now she is in oravilla huh? she is not aware an experiment he also is an experiment so so am i so he comes and sits down and we are having tea in in uh, in visitor center and he starts talking to her and she starts telling her problems in a way to contradict him no you can't do this it can't be done you are wrong within 5 minutes him He, he opened her up so much that she gave him her number she talked to him for the next 15 20 minutes so it did not become anything about me they started talking and then later asked me is he coming back so i think hopefully we will meet her today or tomorrow so is he coming back with such enthusiasm uh, and a ray of hope see how, how how things work how the experiment works the experiment is not happening here alone it is happening through this place through the whole world thank you very much sanjay ji for this experiment and thank you for being part of uh, this grand experiment he started the trip along with us we had performed in shobindo's house on 5th and 6th we did calligraphy so i will try to give you a gift of shobindo's and after that i will end okay uh shobindo says he has yours is a punch line but his is a mantra when shobindo says it will be a mantra so i i will attempt at writing this mantra in calligraphy okay just as we did it in in kolkata on 5th we had done calligraphy over there so similarly i will try to do it and gift this to you the mantra is all life is yoga this i have done in new calligraphy inspired by leonardo da vinci who used to write mirror image this i have written in english all life is yoga shri aurobindo so i have written from up to down okay thank you thank you so much thank you thank you i will end with uh, 
Shrobindo's mantra, uh, Shrobindo's Gayatri mantra. Savitulvaram Rupam Jyoti Parasya Dhimahi Yanna Satyena Deepaye Om Tat Savitulvaram Rupam Jyoti Parasya Dhimahi Yanna Satyena Deepayet Om Om Tat Saviturvaram Rupam Jyoti Parasya Dhimahi Yanna Satyena Deepayet Om